we have five properties of parallelogram. Ngayon, ano ba pag sinabi natin property or properties? So, pag sinabi natin properties, ito yung katangian, katangian or characteristic ng parallelogram. So, just like in a normal person, di ba, in a normal person, meron silang kanya-kanyang katangian. So, in parallelogram, meron siyang sariling katangian. And we have five properties of parallelogram. In parallelogram, opposite sides are congruent. Opposite angles are congruent. Adjacent or consecutive angles are supplementary. Then diagonals bisect each other. And last one is triangles formed by a diagonal are congruent. So, iisa-isahin natin to later on. So, para mas maintindihan nyo yung ibig sabihin ng bawat property. Now, we have here the figure parallelogram. In naming a parallelogram, so we can name it using the points. So, we have here point J, point U, point M, and point P. So, we can name this as parallelogram J, U, M, P. In naming a parallelogram, kailangan po magkakasunod yung or dapat matitrace mo yung letters. Hindi po pwedeng parallelogram J, M, U, P. So, hindi po pwede yun. Dapat magkakasunod. So, it should be J, U, M, P. Pwede rin namang in-name natin as parallelogram U, M, P, J. Pwede rin namang parallelogram M, P, J, U. So, I hope you get the point. Basta magkakasunod lang siya. Or para nagtitrace lang tayo ng dot. Connect the dots lang. So, parallelogram P, J, U, M. So, that's how you name a parallelogram. Let's have now the first property, which is the opposite sides are congruent. So, we're going to explain opposite sides are congruent as one of the properties of parallelogram. So, para mas maintindihan natin, kumbaga, hihimay-himay natin yung isang buong statement. So, we're going to start with the word opposite. So, pag sinabi natin opposite, sa Tagalog kabaliktaran. Um, in terms of parallelogram naman, so pag sinabi natin opposite, kung ano yung katapat niya. Okay? So in parallelogram or in any quadrilateral, when we say opposite, yun, kung ano yung katapat niya. Now we have here opposite sides. So pag sinabi natin opposite sides, yung dalawang side na magkatapat. Ang dalawang side na magkatapat dito, so the first one is side JU, Ito po, side JU and side PM. Magkatapat po yan, tama? Again, opposite side, side JU and side PM. And based on the property, opposite sides are congruent. So, ano ibig sabihin ng congruent? So, the term congruent means the same. So, ibig sabihin, um, yung measurement din nung side or nung dalawang side ay equal. Now, buuin ulit natin, opposite sides are congruent. So, kung i-explain natin yan, ibig sabihin, yung dalawang magkatapat na side sa parallelogram ay pareho or the same or it could be equal. Now, so JU and PM are congruent. So, yan pong ibig sabihin ng unang property. So, JU is congruent to PM. And we have another pair of opposite sides. So, we still have here JP and UM. So, we can also conclude based on the property that JP or side JP is congruent to side UM. So, for example, if JU is 17, of course, the measurement of PM is 17 as well. So, that is the meaning of opposite sides are congruent. So, if JP is 8, UM is 8. Next property po natin is opposite angles are congruent. Ang pinagkaiban netong pangalawang property natin is instead of sides, we use angles. So the first property is opposite sides are congruent. Ngayon naman, opposite angles are congruent. So in-explain ko na kanina kung ano yung opposite, yun nga yung katapat. Ngayon, we have here opposite angles. So, yung magkatapat na angle. So, ano yung dalawang magkatapat na angle dito? So, ano ang katapat ng angle J? 
So, ang katapat ba ng angle J ay angle U? So, hindi po. Ang katapat ng angle J dito ay angle M. So, therefore, ang angle J at saka angle M ay congruent. So, angle J and angle M are congruent. So, ang kasunod pa na magkatapat dito ay angle P and angle U. So, we can conclude also that angle P is congruent to angle U. So, angle P and angle U are congruent. So, going back to naming angles muna. So, let's have a quick review. Um, in naming an angle, so this one is the vertex. Okay, ito po yung vertex niya. So, angle J. So, we can name the angle using its vertex. So, ito po yung angle J. Ngayon, so we can also give another name for angle J using the three points. So, we can name this as angle P, J, U. So, ito po yung angle niya. So, just like connecting the dots. So, i-trace nyo lang. So, angle P, J, U. So, another name for angle J is angle U, J, P. Now, angle J, and then angle P, J, U, and angle U, J, P are all the same. So, this is just a quick review in naming an angles. So, hindi lang um, angle J yung pwede natin ipangalan. So, another one, for example here, yung angle U naman. So, ano yung pa yung pwede natin ipangalan sa angle U? So, ang angle U ay ito. Ito po yung angle U. So, let's try to connect the dots. So, J, U, M. So, that is also angle U. Same lang yun. Or M, U, J. And, ang technique dyan, kung mapapansin nyo, yung naming ng the same angles, kung ano yung vertex, yun yung nasa gitna. Katulad na ito, di ba yung J is the vertex, angle J? So, yung vertex, lagi nasa gitna, P, J, U. U, J, P. So, yun po yung isang technique para malaman natin kung pareho yung angle or not. So, that is only a quick review po in naming an angle. So, the next property is consecutive angles are supplementary. In this property, we're still going to deal with angles. Ngayon, instead of having opposite angles, consecutive angles naman. Pag opposite angles, magkatapat just like angle J and angle M. Magkatapat yan. Now, ano yung consecutive angles? Pag sinabing consecutive, magkatabi or magkasunod. So, let's have angle J. So, here, angle J. Ano ang katabi ng angle J or yung kasunod niya? So, ang kasunod ng angle J here is angle U. Or pwede rin naman na ang magkatabi ay angle J and angle P. Okay? So, therefore, angle J, angle J and angle U are consecutive angles. We can also have angle J and angle P. They are also consecutive angles. Ngayon, in this property, ano ang sinasabi or ano yung tinutukoy about consecutive angles? Sabi sa property, consecutive angles are supplementary. Do you still remember supplementary angles? So, when we say supplementary angles, so the sum of the two angles is equal to 180. So, therefore, so yung angle J and angle U, pag pinag-add mo, so pag pinag-add natin yan, so that is equal to 180 degrees. Ayun pong ibig sabihin ng supplementary angles. Supplementary angles, when you add two angles, it is equal to 180 degrees. So, another one, angle M and angle U is equal to 180 degrees. So, bakit naging 180 degrees yung M at U? Dahil nga, based on our property, consecutive angles are supplementary. Yung angle M, ito po yung angle M. Ito yung angle M at magkatabi yan or katabi niyan ang angle U. So, pag pinag-add natin yung angle M at angle U, that is 180. So, another one is angle M and angle P. So, 180 din yan. 
pag pinag-add. And last one is of course angle P and angle J. So they're also 180 degrees when they are added together. Now, kung yung angle J is 115 degrees, so ano ang measurement ng angle U? So, ang measurement ng angle U, all you have to do is to subtract 180 by 115. So, 180 minus 115. So, that is 65. So, therefore, angle U is 65 degrees. So, pag pinag-add natin yan, 115 plus 65. So, that is equal to 180 degrees. Now, kung mapapansin nyo, meron tayo ditong angle or measurement ng angle. So, check natin kung natatandaan nyo pa yung um, isa pa nating property. So, kung ang angle J ay 115, so anong measurement ng angle M? So, anong property ba yung um, applied or applicable dito? So, that is opposite angles are congruent. Tama? Kasi yung angle J at angle M ay magkatapat. So, therefore, kung angle J ay 115 degrees, so, therefore, ang angle M ay 115 degrees as well. So, the fourth property is diagonals bisect each other. So, again, himay-himay natin to. So, let's have first the word diagonal. So, when we say diagonal in a given figure, uh, meron tayo ditong point J at meron tayo dito point M. Magkatapat na point yan, point J at point M. Kapag kinonek natin yung magkatapat na points, point J at point M, we will create a diagonal. So, yun po ibig sabihin ng diagonal. So, when we connect the opposite points in a given figure, so, we call it diagonal. So, we have here diagonal JM. And, Pwede rin natin ipangalan yan as, or pangalanan as MJ. JM or MJ, so pareho lang po yan. Diagonals bisect each other. So the word bisect. Dahil each other yan, so we have to create another diagonal. So we can have another diagonal here. So sa P at saka sa point U, so we can have um, diagonal UP. So, dalawa na yung diagonal natin, diagonal JM and diagonal UP. Ngayon, kung mapapansin nyo, yung JM at UP ay nag-intersect. So, they crossed. So, when two lines intersect, nagkakaroon tayo ng point of intersection. So, point of intersection. Now, in this property, we're going to name this point of intersection as point O. Hindi naman kailangan lagi or hindi naman required na O. So, pwede namang ibang letter ang gamitin dyan. Basta hindi na gamit dito sa gilid. So, for example here, pwede rin natin gamitin to as point A. Yung point O kasi, ito yung parang pinaka-common na letter na ginagamit as point of intersection. So, again, we're going to name this as point O. Now, let's have the word bisect. Ano ba ibig sabihin ng bisect? So, when we say bisect, to cut into two equal parts. Ibig sabihin, pag bisect, hinati. Okay? Nahati siya, at hindi lang siya basta nahati. Nahati siya into two equal parts. Ngayon, buuin na natin yung statement, diagonals bisect each other. So, ibig sabihin, yung diagonals, naghatian silang dalawa. Okay? Ngayon, ang gagawin natin, so itong JM, so try to imagine po ha, so the word is nahati or bisect. So, itong JM, hinati niya yung UP. Again ha, yung JM, hinati yung UP. Ngayon, yung hinati yung UP, so, nakabuo tayo ng UO at saka ng PO. Isipin nyo na lang, yung JM ay isang kutsilyo, di ba? And then, hinati natin yung UP. For example, yung UP ay stick. Isa siyang stick. So, yung JM, for example, kutsilyo yan. For example lang, just to give an analogy. So, yung JM, hinati niya yung UP. So, syempre, pag hinati natin ng isang bagay, mahati yan sa dalawa. Ngayon, yung UP, again, nahati yan into UO and PO. 
So therefore, based on the property or the definition of bisect, to cut into two equal parts. Nung hinati ng JM yung UP, so yung UO at PO ay hindi lang basta nahati. So nahati sila sa dalawang equal parts. So therefore, we can conclude that UO is congruent to PO. So balik tarin naman natin, yung JM naman ang nahati. So kapag nahati yung JM, so makabuo tayo ng JO at ng MO. And to conclude, JO and MO are congruent. So yun po ang ibig sabihin ng ating um, property, diagonals bisect each other. So JO is congruent to MO. And the other one is PO is congruent to UO. So next, for example, kung ang JO ay 21, so therefore, ang MO ay 21 din. Now, we can um, give us another conclusion here. Kung ang JO ay 21 at ang MO ay 21, Therefore, ang JM, yung isang buong line or isang buong diagonal ay 42. So, you get the point? So, we just add JO and MO. So, 21 plus 21 is equal to 42. Or, we can say it in other way. So, ang JO ay kalahate ng JM. So, therefore, if we're going to equate that, JM is equal to 1 half JO. So, kalahati po yan. Yung JO ay kalahati ng JM. So, next one is, or the last one. So, this will be the last one. Triangles formed by a diagonal are congruent. So, I think after having those four properties, so, kapag hinimay-himay natin itong um, statement na to, alam nyo na lahat yung mga definition na kada word. So, we have the word triangles, we have the word diagonal, and the word congruent. Yan lang naman yung mga keywords dyan. So, if we're going to explain that triangles formed by a diagonal or congruent, kapag nag-draw daw tayo ng diagonal, so kapag naglagay tayo ng diagonal dito, for example, diagonal JM, so if you're going to take a look, so makakabuo tayo ng dalawang figure dyan. So, yung figure ay triangle. So, that is triangle JPM and another triangle, triangle JUM. And, sinasabi ng property na yung dalawang triangle daw ay congruent. Ibig sabihin, pag nag-draw tayo ng diagonal, makakabuo tayo ng dalawang triangle at yung dalawang triangle na nabuo ay congruent. So, that is the definition of our last property. So, we can conclude that triangle JUM, so there, so that is triangle JUM, is congruent to triangle MPJ. So, that is triangle MPJ. So, those are the properties of parallelogram. So, I hope na intindihan po ninyo. So, let's have a quick review. So, Enumerate lang natin lahat ng properties ng parallelogram. So, the first one is opposite sides are congruent. The next one is opposite angles are congruent. Then, consecutive angles are supplementary. Diagonals bisect each other. And the last one is triangles formed by a diagonal are congruent. So, ito lang yung parang pinaka basic part nung lesson natin. So, what if there is already a solving involving the properties of a parallelogram? So, we're going to have that later.